David here from Fig Boot on Pens. Today we're going to take a look at a pen from one of my favorite manufacturers, Lamy. Uh, the pen we are going to look at today is the Lamy Studio. Uh, the Studio is special to me, first of all, that I think it's a little underrated. And then secondly, when I purchased this pen, uh, my very first one of these, at the time it was the most I had ever spent on a pen. So a great deal of thought and, and research and careful consideration went into the purchase. Um, I have three different variants of the Studio, so what we're going to do is take a look at some of the basic features of the Studio, some of the pros and cons of each of the three variants, and what makes them special, and then we'll do uh, some measurements and provide a writing sample. So here is the Lamy Studio. Uh, this specific pen has the brushed stainless finish. Try to get a little closer just so you can see kind of the brushed stainless look on that. It's one of my favorite finishes on any pen in my collection. Uh, it has an awesome look and feel, and the light brushed texture is, is very pleasant to the touch. Uh, the clip on the Studio is one of the fav my favorite. Uh, that it gives the illusion that it's kind of twisted, but in actuality it's more pinched and kind of resembles an airplane propeller. So it's very cool. Uh, the tension is decent. But I have noticed that the, the clip tension varies on all three versions of my pen. So there might be a little bit of a QA issue there. Uh, there's also something that really probably can't be picked up by the camera, but I've noticed on the finial that there is some light um, tooling marks on, the, on both ends of this particular model, and it isn't present on the other two. So it's something very, very minor, but again, maybe going into some of the QA, QA issues of why uh, one pen is different than the other. Uh, it does have Lamy written on the, the back here, or the top of the cap, and then the uh, kind of a shiny finial, and then uh, a shiny end to the barrel. The studio has a snap cap, and one of the things that I think is really neat is that the cap actually snaps on to the barrel. Uh, the, let me just show you this, the little raised thing at the end of the barrel uh, is identical to the section and what holds it in place. So it physically snaps on. Now, um, when you I kind of like design elements like that. And when you post it, it's not going anywhere. And the one thing that is a little odd is, we'll try to see, is that you could actually, it actually wobbles a little bit when it's on here. Uh, and at first I thought something was wrong with the pen, and I was trying to figure out what the matter was. But then I realized that it's actually a design feature so that the metal is not scraping against metal when you are uh, posting the pen. Now, uh, it's, it's very secure. But uh, depending on how your, pen, your hand, the pen lays in your hand, this transition, especially on this uh, brushed stainless version, can be a little bit sharp on your hand right here. Uh, the edge can be sharp. Uh, the section is plastic and tapers down slightly. And the stainless steel nib is identical to the ones that are used on the Safari and All Star and Vista. Uh, this one is a medium and performs very well, which we'll see in the writing sample. So let's take a look at uh, two other variants that I have of this pen. Uh, this is the Imperial Blue. I really, really love this deep blue color, uh, as well as the matte finish on here. Um, when you post it, I find that the transition here is much less sharp than on the stainless steel version. But the thing I really, really don't care for on this pen is this section. This, um, for me, this smooth metal is extraordinarily slick. And I really have a hard time gripping this pen. It really slides around a lot for me. And I don't have that issue with many other pens. But for some reason, this slick, uh, this slick metal really gives me a hard time in, in holding this pen. And it's really a shame because uh, it really prevents me from using this pen this much. Uh, and like I said, the, the color and the finish, I really, really love, just not the section. So finally, we have the palladium finish. And 
this palladium finish looks very much like the silver one, but it's um, kind of more of a goldish silver. And it has a light matte finish, which can, which is maintained in the section. Uh, and the section is metal as well, not plastic. Uh, and that uh, there really is no slippage issues for me on this particular model. But the big difference about this version is the gold nib. And try to get a good look at that. Which I like a great deal. I think the gold stripe down the middle of the, uh, the pen looks great. And as I mentioned, these are interchangeable. So, you know, in theory, you could put this gold nib on your Safari or your uh, All-Star. I'm not quite sure why you would want to, but it's possible. So, I enjoy the Studio very much. Uh, it feels really good in my hand. It has a decent weight and feel to it. Uh, and, and it works really well posted or unposted. Uh, that if you're looking to make a, a step up from an entry-level pen, that uh, the Lamy Studio is a, a really solid choice. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some measurements, and then we'll go into a writing sample. Here we go with the writing sample for the Lamy Studio. We'll start with the traditional steel nib. And this is the Lamy Studio. And this is a medium nib. And this particular ink is Conway Stewart Bodeman. which I think is a kind of an underrated black. This is what the bottle looks like that it comes in. But I like this black very much. It's a very deep, dark black. So now we'll just do a writing sample. Lazy dog. So the, uh, the steel nib doesn't have a ton of flex to it, and as I mentioned before, it's identical to the nib that is on the Safari and the All-Star and the Vista. Uh, it does write very nice. It's not necessarily the smoothest nib in the world, but it's not scratchy by any means. Let's see how it does with a little bit of fast writing. And it keeps up just fine. We'll see how it does with some line variation. You can get a little bit out of there, but you don't want to push this too much. So now let's take a look at the Palladium version, which has the gold nib, which is a very nice nib. And well, this one is uh, Bung Box, the ink, 4B. Now, I like this ink very much. This is the Bung Box, what it comes in now. Uh, it used to come in, I kind of like the older bottles they had. This is uh, an older bottle of Bung Box ink, uh, but I was, wasn't able to pick up a, a 4B in this bottle, but they changed their bottles. I kind of like this one, this bottle a little bit better. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this blue ink, uh, this Omazaki uh, Lapis Luzi, or Lapis, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it, it's just a little too light blue for me, but uh, I really do like this 4B a lot. And just a little bit of writing on here. And so this nib does have a little more spring to it, as you might expect from a gold nib. And it is considerably smoother than the steel nib. And you could actually get quite a bit of line variation out of this. Uh, and in regard to fast writing, it doesn't have 
any issue whatsoever keeping up. In the grand scheme of things, I um, uh, Lanny's mediums, I kind of wish their mediums were less broad and their fines were less fine. Uh, I, I kind of like something a little on the in-between side. I do like Lanny's nibs. I, I like their mediums more than their fines. Uh, but I, I wish the mediums were just a little slightly uh, less broad. But Overall, the Lamy Studio is a very solid pen that, if, in my opinion, I enjoy using on a regular basis. If um, you're looking to make a step up from an entry-level pen, then it's an excellent choice. But thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.